Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to download and install PyCharm, which is the IDE for uh, professional developers, right? Now, IDE is the integrated development environment. In other words, you don't have to download different versions of Python, for example, and then use them separately or try to manage them. This particular IDE would allow you to fully manage your Python development environment. Now, before I get into the actual downloading and installing, it's a straightforward process, but I'd like to mention a couple of new things and important areas that you like to know. So I'm gonna first go ahead and click on what's new in PyCharm 2020 version. So let's go ahead and click on what's new. So this includes several new features. And one of the features that I like to highlight at this point, you can read through the rest of them, but the install Python from PyCharm is a very nice feature within this newer version of the PyCharm. So installing Python from PyCharm, a common question for the support team that typically is asked that you've installed PyCharm, but how do you actually run your code? So in this particular version, they've made it easier, especially if you're using Windows. If you're using Mac, or Ubuntu, that's much easier at this point in time because they have these terminals, right? They can download and run these two sudo update commands. But for Windows, a little bit easier in this version as well. So if PyCharm doesn't find the version of a Python, for example, it will suggest that you should download the concerned or relevant Python version. Now, typically, of course, things are changing. The syntax also a little bit changes, but importantly, it remains uh, the same for the most part. As long as you understand the concept, you should be good. So this is one of the areas that is very helpful. So, you know, they're making things easier and easier day by day. And of course, there are other improvements that you can take a look at, and then it'll help you as you work and install PyCharm for your Python code. All right, great. So let's scroll up here. So once you have taken a look at the what's new in PyCharm 2020 version, just click on download. And what this is going to do is going to give you a couple of versions. First is the professional version. Of course, it has a free trial. And then you can download the professional version. After the free trial, of course, you have to pay. But we're going to use the community version, which is free and open source. And this is, again, for Python development. It's available in three different versions, whether it's Windows or whether it's Mac or Linux. Okay, so it just depends on which version you're using. So if I'm using Windows, I'm going to go ahead and download the community version. If I'm using Mac, I'm going to download the Mac version. And similarly, I'll just select the Linux, and it will give me the command to install on Ubuntu. All right, so I'm going to choose Windows and simply go ahead and click on Download. So what this is going to do is bring up the dialog box on your Windows Explorer. And you can just simply navigate to the folder where you like to save the download executable file so that you can install it afterward, right? So it's going to download the PyCharm community version 2020.1.2.exe file. And I've already created a folder for myself. It's called PyCharm under the software folder. So just simply click on save and it's going to start to download the Python community version. Perfect. So we're going to give it a minute or two for it to download the community version. And from here on out, you can simply click on the actual executable file and it's going to run the installation process. You'll also find if you're new to PyCharm's first time installation of the Python uh, PyCharm program, there's an installation instructions as well. So simply right click. I'm going to just quickly show you this. It's a fairly straightforward process. Again, as a homework, you can do this to install PyCharm. First, ensure that you have the system requirements such as your RAM, disk space, monitor resolution, and operating system. And then once you have satisfied all of these requirements, pretty much are fairly standard, then you can go ahead and simply start the executable file. Also note that you don't need to install Java to run PyCharm because JetBrains runtime is bundled with the Java or JRE 11, okay? So once again, if you're on a Windows computer, you've downloaded the executable, then you can run the installer and just simply follow the wizard is going to walk you through the installation process. Okay, and just make sure you select or PyCharm community version rather. Great. 
So once the PyCharm Community Edition is downloaded, simply go ahead and run the executable file. And it's going to walk us through the simple installation process. And once it's installed, the installer is going to give you a couple of questions to ask. Just walk through it. So for example, first is, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? In other words, this is just user control access. So click on yes. You may not get this dialog box, but if you do, just click on yes. The first screen is welcome to the PyCharm edition setup. Click next. Now, if you have already installed Python or PyCharm rather 2018 version, which in my case I have, I can click on the dialog box or the radio button here to uninstall the 2018 version and then install the 2020 version. Okay, so it just depends. So I'm going to go ahead and, of course, uninstall 2018 and upgrade to 2020. Click Next. This is going to bring you to the next screen. It's going to ask you and let you know that PyCharm will be uninstalled from the folder itself. And then please confirm if you'd like to delete the cache and settings for the old version. So I'm going to select both of these and click Uninstall. And this is going to start, and of course, first remove the older version. And then it's going to run through the new installation process. So once this is completed, click on close. And now it's going to, of course, run through the 2020 edition, which is the latest one. The destination folder is optional. You can specify your own path. Otherwise, the default path is program files, JetBrains, PyCharm, Community Edition, and so forth. Click Next. Now, in this screen, you'll have a few options. You can create a desktop shortcut. It's going to launch PyCharm directly from your Windows desktop. Which I'm going to just say, OK, fine, let's do that. An update path variable, add launchers directly to the path itself. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this as well. And then, of course, you can also update the context menu and create associations.py. So anytime you save a Python file, it's going to save it as a py file. Click Next. This is a straightforward start menu folder and click on install. So again, straightforward, few steps, and you should be able to not only upgrade or uninstall the previous version of PyCharm if you have it. If you do not, it's just going to simply run through the 2020 version smoothly. You can always click on the show details button, by the way, if you just need to see what's going on. Perfect. So once the installation is complete, the computer must be restarted in order to complete the installation of so you can choose to reboot now yourself or you choose to do it later. So I'm going to leave it as is and click finish. Perfect. So it's going to go ahead and open up your latest version that you've just installed for PyCharm. You may get this dialog box just to let you know that import PyCharm settings. So if you choose do not import settings, it's going to start a fresh new version or you can, of course, choose the existing folder. So I'm going to say do not import settings, click OK, and perfect. So you have the latest version of PyCharm installed, which is the 2020 version. Here are a couple of plugins. It's going to walk you through setting your user interface theme. In other words, it's just a color scheme, right? So you want this option or you want the light version. So it depends on your own preference. So I'm going to choose the light version, click Next, download featured plugins. So if you're Let's say using AWS environment, you can install the AWS toolkit right off the bat so you don't have to install it later. You can always skip and set defaults, by the way, and install all of these plugins later on as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Using PyCharm. And this is going to open up the actual software for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and have the option to create a new project or open an existing project. Before I do this, notice it says PyCharm version 2020.1.2. There's a configure option, right? There's a gear icon. You can click on this option and then configure your settings, your repositories, and check for any updates. Okay? So if you click on settings, for example, it's going to bring up a dialog box. And this is where you can take a look at different settings, such as the appearance and behavior, the editor itself. The plugins version control project interpreter for example at this point there is no interpreter you can of course add and install interpreters and then language and tools and so forth 
So just kind of go through some of these options, get yourself familiarized with the common options that you'll be working with. So for example, if I expand the editor, it's just going to give me the list of my option or settings option. So in the general, for example, I can choose the font size, the default font size, the mouse, the virtual space, and so on. So just quickly wanted to run through this. The plugins is great. This is where you can actually connect to the marketplace and then download the plugins. Plugins are simple tools that help you or facilitate or expedite your coding process. So just a quick word on the project interpreter. So for example, at this point, I've not selected any interpreter at this point, right? So I'm going to go ahead and simply click on the gear icon and I can add an interpreter. It's going to bring up a dialog box where I have the option to add a Python interpreter within a new environment or an existing environment. So the base interpreter at this point that I'm using is python.exe or I can choose other versions as well that I've installed otherwise on my computer. If you don't have anything installed then you just simply go ahead and use the python executable and you can also choose the inherit global site packages or make available to all projects if that's the case then it's always going to use this particular python.exe you can also download the base interpreter we'll have this option if you don't have it installed and that's the newest update with the pycharm 2020. so in my case i'm using the python 3.6 version since we know that the 3.5 has been suspended, we're going to use the 3.6 version. So click OK. This is going to take you back to the welcome screen because we're actually still in the settings area. So from here, I can click on New Project. It's going to ask me the name of the project. I'm going to say Sample Project. And then you create a new environment or use the location that kind of gives you the directory path and your base interpreter as well so i'm going to go ahead and click create and finally it's going to open up the pycharm for me make it bigger the tip of the day of course if you like you can see all these tips every single time you open it so I'm going to click on close it's going to scan and update the indices and kind of on the bottom right corner shows me the version of the Python. So right now I have Python 3.6 version. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this window and we have the PyCharm installed. Notice on the bottom right, once again, is Python 3.6 version, which is the project interpreter. I can, of course, add the interpreter or go back to the interpreter settings. And this is going to take me back and bring up a dialog box once again. So if I click on add interpreter, for example, Notice you have the same dialog box that we took a look at earlier, where you can create different environments, where you can actually use Anaconda environment as well. Take a look at the system interpreter, hip environment, and so on. So let's cancel out of here. And we have our sample project. Here's our library root, and of course, all of the folders. So I hope this helps. Come practice with it. Take a look at all of these options, how to install PyCharm. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.